Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. Let me start this video by saying thank you so much to all of you who are always here watching our videos and hopefully you'll always learn something new from what we put together for you. So now buckle up and let's get on with the video then. There's something that Monsignor Rossetti said that really caught my attention and I really believe you'll find this one interesting too about God and how hell really is a mercy to the fallen angels. One of the major obstacles is always the reality of suffering and evil. How can God allow this? Perhaps one of the greatest is the existence of hell. People say, well, how can God send anyone to hell? Something that John Paul II, uh, Pope John Paul, told us. He said, God really doesn't send anyone to hell. He said, people choose it. But even the existence of hell, we can still struggle with it. Well, how can, how can God allow this? I began to realize in my ministry as an exorcist that hell really is shocking but true, really a mercy. Everything that God does is loving and merciful, even though it might not seem it at the time. I know it's in exorcisms that when we hold up anything holy, the demons go nuts. They, they, you hold up a crucifix, ecce, crucem domini, fut et parte adversae, they start screaming. If something small like that could cause them an immense amount of suffering, Imagine what it'd be like for the demons to be in the presence of God. It would be a torture beyond belief. They couldn't stand it. So hell is a place, sadly, uh, away from the Lord, who they rejected. And were they in God's presence, it would be a suffering beyond, beyond anything. So as crazy as it sounds, for them, hell really is uh, a, a mercy. Now I'm sure some of you have heard exorcists and the church saying this, that yoga is a portal to the demonic. I've shared a clip of Father Ripperger regarding the subject before and I'll share it again here. Father Ripperger, is yoga a portal to demonic obsession, possession? Um, it is. Uh, I, this one's always one of those. I know, it's, I'm getting ready for the, the screeches to, to emerge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't go on the internet and type it. Is this a cult? Because you, you're going to get all sorts of wet. You have to research the masters, the yoga master. And every single one of them will say that the positions and motion and stretching that is done in yoga, each one of them is a representation of an, a specific Eastern deity, which is a.k.a. a demon. So that being said, yes, people can become diabolically influenced. I do know two women who became possessed from practicing yoga. I know people who were possessed, and then by practicing yoga, they ended up with more demons. And so I just tell people you want to completely stay away from it um, uh, altogether. So with that in mind, in case some of you are saying Father Ripperger just making things up, let me share a short clip of an actual Hindu explaining what yoga really is. Because we have the International Yoga Day coming up and yoga is a big buzzword now. Literally everyone knows or thinks they know what is yoga and everyone wants to do yoga, which is a great thing. Uh, but there is a very significant aspect of yoga which most of the yoga teachers, even gurus, have not really touched upon or not really spoken on enough. Yoga is a science. Yoga is not just moving your arms and legs. Moving your arms and legs is not called yoga. So this is something I wanted to really, really emphasize because people have forgotten that. Yoga is not just about moving your arms and legs. Yoga is a clear science with a clear purpose. And yoga is such a science which is given by Mahadeva himself, by none other than Mahadeva, thousands and thousands of years ago. And what is the purpose of yoga, how it is supposed to be practiced, has been given in the Agamas and in many other Vedic texts like Gheran Samhita, um, like the Swatma Rama text, Hatyo Pradipika. All these texts give really clear instructions on yoga. And it is really, really sad to see that even the so-called gurus and gurujis have nowadays started promoting yoga as just a spiritual practice. See, it is very important to understand that yoga is a spiritual practice, but it is not just that. For things like this, let's see it as what it really is and not from so-called Western yoga practitioners who keeps on saying that it's merely a form of exercise. 
And that is why I decided to share again what Father Carlos Martins said about our society today. That hey, there's an update. We're in a different time right now. Uh, the, the evil is 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 very active. And well, I mean, let me say this: it, it may not be the case that evil itself is more active. It may be performing right. the same activity in the same way that it always has, but sure. it's becoming more effective. And it's becoming more effective because society as a whole is becoming pagan again. Yeah. The, Christianity is is being eclipsed as as the dominant cultural pull position mm -hmm. of of society of western society and as the christian pillars upon which our societies our communities our countries have been have been built on then that spiritual vacuum that is left elements move in to fill in that vacuum because yeah. you know william we're created by the Lord to be spiritual Amen. beings. We're created yeah. to crave the transcendent and the supernatural. Yeah. And if we, if we cannot find rest within what the Son of God has done for us, we're going to seek it somewhere else. Yeah. And that somewhere else is going to be dangerous. And the, the that that danger, the exposure to that kind of danger via the dabbling in the occult via the sexual excesses of our culture via the 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 gender confusion that is writ large via yeah. the woke culture uh, via all of the the different elements through which we are connecting to that goes contrary to the sacredness of the human nature of the human person yeah. then that's going to lead us into trouble. That that are, Those are going to form conduits by which the devil attaches himself to us. Monsignor Rossetti and his team spent a lot of time dealing with lower-ranking demons, and most people who are possessed have such lesser demons. And if the exorcists do get their names during the exorcism, they are not commonly known. According to Monsignor Rossetti, occasionally they do run into a higher-ranking demon, and that is when it gets rougher. These are the more well-known princes of hell, such as Beelzebub, Baal, and Asmodeus, and here are moments even when Lucifer himself shows up. But this is rare, and some demons who inhabit the possessed clan will sometimes claim to be Lucifer, but are usually lower-ranking demons perhaps under their direct command. When Lucifer shows up, he is typically surrounded by hell's princes and many, many others. Monsignor Rossetti shared an incident that happened during an exorcism session where he was interrogating the demons and commanded them to tell him who was the leader of the possessing demons. The demonic spokesman answered with an arrogant sneer, the king of hell himself is our leader. Your way out of your league. Later they confirmed that it was Lucifer himself. Monsignor Rossetti had been exorcising this one particular person for a year and a half, and after all the lower demons had been cast out in Jesus' name, including hell's princes, Lucifer himself finally came to the fore. His personality was unique and unmistakable. He came forward with a hiss that sounded like a snake. He was not like the lower demons, who were often superficially boastful, adolescent, and shallow. Despite their innate intelligence, they acted quite stupidly. Lucifer, whose name is often translated as Morning Star, was brilliant, cunning, measured, and deadly. Lower demons cower in the presence of a priest, but Lucifer did not. Monsignor Rossetti even consulted an older exorcist who said, They are trying to intimidate you to see if there is any lack of confidence in you, which they will pursue. Don't take the bait. It would be a tough spiritual battle as Lucifer had a very strong army. He marshaled all of his considerable resources, including the princes of hell and hundreds of demons. But Monsignor Rossetti and the team would not back down because they have the power of heaven on their side, the blessed Virgin Mary, the saints and angels, and of course, Jesus himself. They can't lose. The exorcist invoked the Blessed Virgin Mary and prayed the church's official rite of exorcism. The king of hell screamed and writhed like all the rest, as the ancient rite of exorcism itself says, Yield, therefore, yield, not to myself, but to the minister of Christ. Eventually, as with all the others, the power of Jesus cast him out. Well, for the last part of this video, I'd like to share an audio clip of Monsignor Rossetti praying for us, and I think it's something a lot of us are struggling with, forgiveness. When we do exorcisms, we often begin, almost always, with a forgiveness ritual. The reason why is that when we hold on to unforgiveness, 
Uh, it uh, freezes us, stops our liberation, and frankly, the demons feed on unforgiveness. That's what they are in hell. They are angry at God, and they're railing against God for all eternity. So for us, in order to be liberated from any evil influence, we need to let go of those times and people who have hurt and harmed us. Now, this does not, forgiveness does not mean what they did to me, if they harmed me, was okay. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that they shouldn't be held to account by God. No, God, that's, that's for the Lord to take care of. But it does mean we let go of the desire for revenge, uh, for, we let go of the, the rage, uh, and we ask God to, to bless this person, let the Lord take care of that person, and we ask God for healing and peace. Now, you may have already forgiven uh, people, spouses, friends, parents, anyone may have harmed you, but it's always good to do it again and again, to peel back the layers. And I think you'll find that you're feeling a great sense of increasing freedom and, and liberation the more you can let go. Now, this not only includes individuals who may have harmed you, but could be groups. For example, if you're, if you're of one party, you may hate the other party or vice versa, or you may hate some group or whatever. Uh, so to, to let go of that uh, uh, harm and hurt and, uh, and rage and to ask God for healing and peace. So let's do that. First, I want you to think for a moment who you need to forgive. So get that in your mind. Okay, repeat after me. In the holy name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, I willingly forgive the following people. I willingly forgive the following people. You can mention them out loud or in your heart. I forgive them all and I ask God to bless them. Again, in the holy name of Jesus, I willingly forgive the following people. I forgive them from the bottom of my heart and I ask God to bless them. A third time, I forgive the following people. And I ask God to bless them. Now let's include ourselves. Repeat after me, in the holy name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, I willingly forgive myself. I willingly forgive myself. And I ask God to bless me. I accept God's forgiveness. I accept God's forgiveness. And I ask the Lord to bless me. Now I'll say, in the holy name of Jesus, I witness your forgiveness of others and self. I ask the Lord to heal your heart. Heal these relationships. Bring a deep, deep sense of healing and peace. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, May you be at peace. May the Holy Spirit indeed lift any burden from you and give you a deep, deep sense of the Lord's peace. Well, then that's all for this video. Thank you again so much for taking the time to watch this video. And if it's not too much of a hassle, please share this video on your Facebook or Twitter so that more people will know about this. For any of you who would like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation in the description box below. I'd like to thank all of you in advance for every contribution you make. Well, until the next video again, thanks so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and God bless you.